Hello everybody, this is TJ with ShopBot Tools and welcome to today's training. Today we're going to be looking at carving raised text and different raised vectors and this is an example of one of the signs that we'll be doing and we're going to get right to it and we're going to start out in our Vectric vCarve software, look at our file and then we'll move out to the ShopBot where we'll start carving this out. So let's look at the job setup before we move forward. Looking at the picture of the sign, we could see that it was a glue up of a couple different types of wood and the size of that material is a little over 16 inches by 14 inches and just over an inch thick. And then that was glued up with two different types of material and when we get out on the machine we'll look at the different hold down method that was used on that. But I do want people to note that we did not use the standard zero zero, which is your bottom left corner of your shop bot. What we added here was an offset, and this offset was two inches by two inches. So what that did was that actually took our work material and offset it in two inches in the X and two inches in the Y. And that left us a two inch border around this bottom and left hand side of our material, which will allow us an area to come in and use our hold down. Since we're not changing anything, I'm going to cancel out of that. And I do want to first point out for some of you new users that there is different colors that you see on here. And that's because a lot of the stuff that we use is we put things on layers. And you can see that I have things in different colors layers. It's just easier for designing, navigating. And you can see right now the light bulb is turned off because I don't even have the pocket layer turned on, which we'll see when we go to Toolpath which is just this extra vector that at this current time I don't want to see. So those can be found in the layer commands. And for someone that's new and just getting into this and you want to look more into what layers are, you always have help and then the video tutorial browser. So let's keep going with today's training. And so we have the state of North Carolina. We have the text saying North Carolina. And we're going to V-carve ShopBot because that's where we are based is right here in Durham, North Carolina. So this is just drawing some simple vectors, uh, creating a rectangle, some text, imported in a DXF of the state. And then what we're going to do is we'll come over here and I'll walk you through the different tool paths that we did. So we can see we had to do a pocket and we'll look at adding a clearance and that's how we got the text raised. We also just added a V-carve which is for the ShopBot logo into the state a prism toolpath to break up the text from having a straight end and then finally a cutoff. So let me remind everyone of the picture here. If we're going to pocket this out, especially along the edges here where we want to have this flat and then only the text in the state of North Carolina raised, when we set this toolpath up to pocket, we actually need to bring the bit out past our material a little bit so that our bit is going out past where we're going to make our cutout. So that's where that ties back into the layers. And let's look back now at the file for moving forward. So let's go back and actually delete our toolpaths and walk through this step by step. And in between every toolpath that we create, we'll go out to the machine and show you what it is that we're doing. So where we're at here is we have a 12 by 12 final size of our board and if we're going to pocket everything out except for the text and the vector of the state where like we said in the last picture we want to actually cut outside of it so in the drawing command that's where we went and used the offset and offset it out and what I did with this was I just went out to just past the diameter of the bit and you can see here when I turn on the pocket since I'm gonna cut this out with a big end mill out here that's a half inch I just went out past the finish size that amount and the way we first set this one up is going into a pocket toolpath when you want to leave raised text and you use a pocket toolpath you have the outside vector that you're going to pocket to but you also want to hold the shift key down and select the inside vectors so that's where we have our text and that's where we have the state of our North Carolina so what we need to do through here is go in and set down our cut depth. We have a quarter inch depth that we're going to do. We're going to want to grab the, the right tool. Again, your software leaves in here the previous tool that you used, which was us cutting out name tags. I'm going to go in here and select. And I'm going to grab my wood bit. And what size bit is the question that we're going to need here. So you could grab these bits 
and work way through. But what you need to think about before you even go in here is what size bit is going to fit in between the smallest spacing of your vectors. You could use the measuring tool over on the drawing tab for finding this, measure it and see. And as I did this, I saw that the smallest the largest bit I could go into the smallest area was an eighth of an inch straight bit. So I'll grab my wood, eighth inch straight. And the problem with something like this is it's going to take a long time, especially getting out in this big area out here. That little eighth inch bit doesn't need to be used out here in these larger areas. So that's where we would turn on a large area clearance tool. And the reason for this is a larger area of bit, a larger diameter bit, is going to come in here and clean out a lot faster than that little eighth inch is. Sure, it's going to take us a little bit longer to do a bit change, but in the long run, using a larger area of bit in here and using a smaller bit in between the letters will allow us to save a lot of time. And the software is great when we see the preview here, when you calculate this, that it will automatically keep the larger bit out here in the middle and leave a little bit of material around all of our vectors so then after you do your bit change that will then go in and get down in here into these smaller gaps so the eighth inch straight and our large area clearance bit we want to go in and select and that's where we use the half inch straight so we have our larger bit for the clearance tool our smaller bit to get into the detail in between the, the smaller spacing of vectors and I'm just going to call this my pocket point Two five, so I know how deep it is. And when I hit calculate and I go into the preview here, I can see that there are two toolpaths generated. And one is the clearance tool, where if I turn that on and run that, you can see that that big half inch bit will go and clean all these large areas out, stay outside of the finished detail. And then when you put in your smaller eighth inch bit, do your bit change. That's what's going to go in there and get where that half inch bit couldn't fit and get you the detail. So let's take a look at this out on the shop bot. So here we can see the type of hold down it's talking about where I use a table saw and put a line around my blank. Offset it in the two inches and just use whatever scrap material. These are just some fender washers to hold it down. We'll revisit that later. But notice I put an X on the blank because I'm going to do bit changes. And not only is there an X on the blank, but there's also an X on the Z0 plate. So when I do the bit changes, I come back and I actually zero it in the same spot of the same material with the same part of the Z0 plate, which helps get rid of any discrepancies. So here we are moving along with our half inch bit, which is going to aug out the material first. Remember the half inch bit using the Vectric software stays away from the finished edge of the state of North Carolina, stays away from the finished edge of the text, and it's just working its way through here. So what we can see here is it picked up, it's moved over, and it's still working its way through the cut. And that's what's nice is this large area clearance tool is going around and it's clearing away the text. Yes, a V-carve would be a faster toolpath for certain types of signs, but in here when you have a raised text, it is going to take a while to take the bulk of the material away. And that's why that feature is in there, for removing a lot of material uh, first. And as it carves itself out, you can see where I had the dust collector boot off and I've returned it back on to the remaining part of this video because it does such a lot better job not throwing dust all over your shop. So it was off there for the first few passes. I put it back on and then that's going to show you what it does. So it makes its final pass around doing its cleanup. And then this is the part where we stop it and this is where we look at the bit change for the eighth inch bit. So here's showing you the size difference between the half inch and the eight inch. The eighth inch is clearly needed to get down in between those letters. Same X, new bit put in place, zeroing it with the same spot on the Z0 plate. And what that is nice is since we're using two different end mills going to the same depth, by zeroing it in the same spot, I don't have to worry about having a different deviation in cut depth when you're trying to align the two different tool path depths. So now that little eighth inch bit will get down in, in between the letters and get down and works itself in there. Again, the dust boot is off in this video so you can see, but that little bit is what goes in and does the detail. The larger clear 
clearance tool is what cleared away that big bulk of the material around that. And when this finishes here, we'll go back to the VCarve software to start the next tool path. Okay, we're back in the software, so we'll click up here to go to 2D view and hit close to come out of preview tool paths. And here's where we are. Let me zoom out and we're back to setting up. So we're going to add our V90 next. So that V90 is what we're going to use to carve out ShopBot. And also I want to take and put a beveled edge around all of our raised text just so it doesn't have the, the square corner. So first things first is our V-carve tool path. We're just going to go in and select a V90 that's out of wood. Again, our settings are just a little bit different between wood and plastic, and you can look at tool database uh, tutorials for that. And here's where you can see the word ShopBot. It's our visible. It's carved down in place. And to give our text, our raised text, just a little bit of a beveled edge, I choose to go in this time and do a prism tool path. And instead of a full prism, I'm going to restrict its depth and just say, hey, I only want you to go down about an eighth of an inch. Select the bit. I'm going to use the same bit so I don't have to do a bit change. I'm going to hit calculate. And what it's doing here, and this is something that allows us to see, is, oh no, what's going on? Well, what we have here is a, something that happens to a lot of people when they're getting started was, I was trying to do my prism tool path over here on the word North Carolina. And what happened was, when I started my new toolpath, the vectors that were selected were the same ones from the previous toolpath creation. So instead of starting, going in here and deleting this and starting a new one, what a lot of people overlook is you could just double click on the toolpath that you set up and instead of that being selected, you grab the vectors that it is that you want to work with. And then when you hit calculate, it's pretty much asking us that the, we're not reaching full prism toolpath and do you want to continue which is what we do and we don't need to see this anymore so we would reset the preview and then we can preview all the toolpaths up to this point and then that shows us what this looks like having that depth so it's a raised text and using the prism toolpath you don't have to go in and do any offsetting it figures this out for you puts a nice beveled edge on there and if I wanted that beveled edge to be on the state of North Carolina as well Again, I don't come in back here and create a new prism tool path. If I'm using the same bit, same depth, same parameters, I'm just going to double click on the one I've already created and I'm going to hold the shift key down and select that. I point this out because a lot of people come through ShopBot here in Durham, North Carolina, the basic training, and I'll see over here Prism 1, Prism 2, Prism 3, because they go and they add it. So I like to point out on the tutorial here that, that you can add this all to one, and I'm even going to put in here Prism V90. It can be all done in one toolpath by just having the same toolpath reselected and added in instead of having the multiple ones. And it just keeps it a little bit cleaner over here. Again, personal preference. There's no right or wrong to doing this. It's what works for you. And that's just something I wanted to point out. So there we've added a beveled edge to our ShopBot state of North Carolina as well as our text. So let's go and look at what the V carving, I'm sorry, what the V90 looks like added to our project. Here we are to our third bit, but we're using the same zero location by using the X that we marked, the X on the C0 plate, and what it's going to do is, the, again, the order of the tool paths and the way we created them and then the way we save them. So if we wanted them the other direction as far as doing the beveling first, we just change that back in the software. Here we're going to do the V carving. Toolpath comes out of the way and then it comes back in and then it starts doing the prism toolpath that we set the V90 to go around at an eighth of an inch. So all I'm talking about is the order of the cut. We could have changed it around. It didn't matter. It was the same bit. And finally, we step back and we look and make sure everything's the right way before we cut this out. Because once it's cut out, it's going to be hard to hold everything back in place. Alright, our final tool path is the cutout. So let me again go back to the 2D view and close out of here. And remember, this outer vector, the one in blue, that was the size that we pocketed to, which was larger than our original 12 by 12 square. And the reason, again, was so we had a pocketed out past. That way we'd have 
the flat edge all the way out past our actual cutout. So we want to make sure we grab the 12 by 12 square before we go into our profile. Here for this example I'd like to go by material thickness plus 20 thousandths to go a little bit deeper. That takes it at 1.07. And for this one we use the 3 8 compression bit. I want to cut on the outside of the line. And again, going in, you're just seeing us in this tutorial, selecting these different options. For you to, guys that are just getting started, there's lots of different tutorials on our website and through Vectrix website that show you the different setup for going through profile, pocketing, different tool paths. But I'm going to walk this one down as outside, climb cut. And this one here, I like to nice add a nice healthy ramp to it. That'll ramp itself all the way around in that harder material and call this one the cutout and when I calculate that it says no vector selected so you need to make sure you select not only a vector but the correct one so remember the outside one is where we pocketed the inside one is our 12 by 12 calculate that it is giving you a warning message saying hey your material is 1.05 and we said 1.07 so you guys that are first getting started, read this message, learn this message, and read it again and again. And after your 500th time, still read it and make sure it's the right numbers and the right decimal place. This is okay. I'd rather cut into my sacrificial board that little bit extra. This is a glue up, remember, from uh, from some scrap material. And is it where I mic'd it at at the 1.05? I'm not sure if that's exactly true all the way through the board. So I'm telling it to cut a little bit deeper down into my spoil board. So I am verifying this measurement. Okay. And then when I hit preview here, preview this visible tool path, I can see that it cut all the way through. If you need to add your tabs, you can go back into your cutout and do that. So let's cut this one out so we can see it on the shop bot. And then we'll come back and just finalize in the software. Just a few tips and tricks to remember. But also here I just want to leave the tabs off so you can see that it is beveled all or I'm sorry, it is pocketed all the way down. And when I double click on the scrap material, that goes away. And I can see that my final sign will look like. There's my raised state, my raised text with a beveled edge. And let's go out and finish this cut. The fourth and final time we do our bit change again, same X, same location. This is just our profile cutout using that ramp which augs itself down into the hard material. It does its three passes that go around. Adding tabs are going to keep that from, from moving out of there. And again, this, this hold down method worked as far as keeping it held to the spoil board. I pull my piece out and there that you can see a little bit of sanding, a little bit of finishing. Cleans up, makes a real nice sign. Let's look at the drawing software one more time before we wrap this tutorial up. So a few things to take into account is you see on here what the ShopBot's going to do. There's a great preview, but you still need to remember what type of material it is that you're working with. I glanced over this when we set up the pocket tool path. But if I actually go back in there and look, initially it doesn't see it so much on the preview finish, but you do see it in the preview when the tool path is turned on. Is This is set as an offset because that's whoever used this software last sat down at this computer. This is the, the type of cut that they did. Well, if we look back here at the material, that the grain is all running horizontally or along our x-axis. So I actually got a lot better cut direction if I was to change this from offset to raster. So currently it was as an offset. If I would have been checking my work, I would see um, in the preview I would have watched the tool path going back and forth. I would have seen the direction that it was cutting and said, oh no, I wanted this to actually go back and forth with the grain. So I could come back in here and change that to a raster where it rasters back and forth. And again, not only do you change the, the type of cut, you can change the direction of the cut. So keep that in mind too. Know the material that you're working with. All right. Another thing that people will notice with this tutorial is the start point, which is back here out of the way, instead of the bottom left corner where your zero zero is. That's set up here underneath material setup, where I actually change the home slash start position, which the start position would be the same as the ending, to have the machine go to 2020. So as soon as it's done cutting, 
instead of going by default back here to zero zero where I'd have to use the keypad and move it around I just set the default to 2020 so it would move itself out of the way and for a reason why is convenience uh, for me it was f photography of the video so that's just uh, a personal preference of you setting up the home slash start position so as you're working through the software both on the drawing and the tool pathing side you're going to start finding tips and tricks that work for you know your material know what you're working with know your shop out the size of your machine notice that when i use this and i put the offset in way back here at the beginning of the xy datum position uh, i marked that in from my x over to and up to i could have clearly not had this with no offset in this software left that off and then just on my shop bot itself i went in and made a temporary zero zero so start playing around with these different things as you're working through these projects and and for someone that hasn't done any raised text, take this file, take this tutorial, and just kind of mock up through, even just on a scrap piece of MDF material, and walk through the steps of using a pocket toolpath and using the prism toolpath to put a little beveled edge on there and try your, try your shot at a raised text sign because they really are a lot different than just a standard v-carve and they really are neat in their own way so again thank you for today's training it was great working with all of you and we'll see you next time